Rachel Devereaux is a 35-year-old shop manager from Lancaster, England, who had her first missing time experience only three months ago. What makes her account exceptional is that it was shared by her mother Anne and her two sons Alexandra and Benjamin. We've been to the Little Chef and um, we just had our tea there, an evening meal. We left there about half past five. I remember looking at the, the clock so I was thinking I had, yeah, it was about 20 past half five because I thought I've got my ironing to do, I need to get home. Benjamin was in the furthest corner of the car and my nana was in just behind me. The boys were chatting and we remember commenting on the chimneys. The silhouette of the, the chimneys really stood out against the sky. Now when I think about it, that's the last thing I can remember. The next thing I remember is just seeing this awesome bright light. I saw it going up and then it hovered right above the car. It doesn't make sense even, you know, when I talk about it, but we all felt that it was like just this absolutely overwhelming love that you just felt from it. You'd, you'd be happy just to sit there and look at it forever. Or just want it to land and go away with it. Yeah. And leave everything else behind. Are you human? It was hovering for a bit and came in front of the car and hovered. Then all of a sudden it shot off. Then it was like, all back of a sudden, and then I was driving and the noise was back. You felt this feeling of loss when it had gone because you Definitely. wanted that feeling mm. that it gave you. You wanted it back again. Going from the little chef to our house should have taken about 20 minutes. And it's taken us an hour and 20 minutes. You know, there's facts that I've gone over and over and over in my head and try to rationalise and try to fit into what we know as the world today and everything and it just doesn't fit. Whether these events are physical or psychological, the need for individuals to make sense of them is overwhelming. Having had a missing time experience, Rachel, Anne and the boys were left confused by what it was they experienced. The next day we talked about it again and you just wanted to know who else had seen it. But you just didn't know how, how to, to find that out. And, you know, we talked about a number of things and Mum came up with the idea of phoning the radio station, radio the, the local radio station. A family from North Lancashire have been describing how they saw a mysterious light in the sky last night. Rachel Devereux was driving on the moors between Ingleton and Bentham with her two children and her mother, Anne. They all saw a bright light move at great speed and change directions. Anne says she's never seen anything like it before. This was like a really, really bright, pure white light in a perfect ball shape. No trails, nothing. Lots of people say, well, a few people have said they see this light seriously. Keith near Clitheroe, Vera in Clitheroe, and Ian in Fenniscoles. A local UFO group also heard the family's story and made contact. I got in touch with Anne first. I phoned her up, and that was shortly after they first saw the light. And she was very euphoric about it. She was just wanting to know what it was, really. The UFO group were able to help Rachel and Anne document the events of the night but the emotional support they could offer was limited. We're a local UFO group. We're not professionally qualified at all. And I think it would be quite difficult for someone to go to their MP, who, I mean, the GP. There isn't anyone who can t deal with people who've got a strange experience like this. I think they'll want to get answers to what happened to them during that time. Whether they will do is open to question. You suddenly, you've got all these different factors in your life that are just a complete mystery. It's helplessness and it makes you cry because you don't know how to stop it. You don't know what it was. Um, I mean, it's making me cry now. I don't know what. <laughs> Don't wait, Grace. <laughs> if you start to think about it like we are now, it becomes overwhelming and you can't cope with it.
I mean, they can mock you, they're skeptics, they can say, oh, you've all got false memories and you all imagined it. But I know I didn't, because I know how it's made me feel inside. More than anything, it's, um, it's just wanting to make sense of it. That's the way, that's the feeling it gives you. Just wanting more knowledge and wanting to, to make everything fit into place in a way that you can understand. Rachel Devereaux had her first missing time experience just three months ago while driving home. Having looked into the phenomenon, she has decided to take a bold but common step for people who have had this type of encounter. Hi, hi. She's going to have hypnotic regression. I'm feeling quite nervous about it, about the uh, regression, um, but also quite excited. Right, so you might not have done this before, but I've done it a few thousand times. Rachel's hoping that under hypnosis she can be taken back to when she had her experience and retrieve memories that are not consciously accessible. I want it to be an honest account, you know, if I do remember. How do you feel? Happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. You feel like it's okay. Good to feel. <laughs> It's, it's no walls, it's just black everywhere. It's like standing in the middle of space. There's big, big bright light here, right in front of me. That's high, and that's watching what the little ones are doing, the small ones going around and looking at us and talking to each other. They think the boys are funny. They think they're funny. I can hear laughing now, the children laughing, they're really giggling. <laughs> I'm scared for the children. <laughs> but the light's there and it's just telling me it's fine and we're not going to hurt them. They're your children. They're your children, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Just feel yourself coming back more and more alert. Good, well done. How do you feel? Wow. <laughs> I can't believe how real that felt from my perspective having completed thousands of regressions over the years she didn't fabricate that she no. didn't pretend uh, to cry speechless <laughs> I'm just kind of speechless do I believe everything that happened I'm sort of 90% there yeah but it was real